Welcome, this is Dr. Amanda Rackinson ZAPQ, and in this tutorial we're going to talk about variables. Um, by the end of this tutorial you should be able to identify your variables, label them, and um, define them in both narrative and operational form. So let's get started. Let's start by talking about and identifying different types of variables. We're first going to talk about an independent variable. An independent variable is a variable that is being manipulated. Um, it's some type of intervention. An independent variable is used in a group comparison study, for example, a causal comparative study or some type of experimental study. An independent variable may be something such as um, an intervention, a math, let's say a math intervention for second grade students. Let's say that you use a um, Let's say the independent variable is type of math lesson, and one type of math lesson is a traditional math lesson, and the other uses a problem-based um, approach. So you have one independent variable with two levels. Again, it's the variable that's usually measured, manipulated. It's the variable that you're looking to have an effect on another variable. And that other variable is the dependent variable. Again, the dependent variable is used in group comparison studies, causal comparative, uh, or experimental. And the dependent variable is the response variable. Um, it's the variable that you look for the independent variable to have an effect on. Um, it's important to note here that I am talking about um, independent and dependent variables in terms of experimental and um, causal comparative studies. When you're looking or when you're doing a correlational study, um, specifically a regression study, it's important to note um, that instead of using the term dependent variable, you often use the term criterion variable. Uh, this is because you, um, and oftentimes in a regression study, you don't actually manipulate and measure a variable. So you're not looking to see if this variable is dependent upon the independent variable. So you use the term criterion. Um, when you plan a regression study, instead of using the term independent variable, you often use the term predictor or predictor variables. Again, remember, the independent variable is usually the variable that you're looking to have some type of effect on the dependent variable. It's the variable that the researcher manipulates. And often in a regression study, you're not manipulating the variable. So um, you use the term criterion and predictor in a regression study. And that brings me to the next point. By definition, you really can't have an independent and dependent variable in a correlational study because you're simply looking or considering the relationship between two different variables. Um, deciding which is really independent and which is dependent can be arbitrary. So in a correlation study, um, the relationship between variables is considered, and then in an experimental study, you really are manipulating a variable and measuring the effect of that manipulation on the other variable. Um, as I said, by definition, the independent and dependent variable simply are arbitrary terms. So when you're conducting a correlation study, it's usually more appropriate to use uh, the term variables of interest because you're simply looking to see if there's a relationship between the two variables. So thus far, just to review, we've talked about we've talked about um, independent and dependent variables. The independent variable is the variable that's being manipulated or the variable that you're looking to um, have an effect on the second variable we talked about, which is the dependent variable. And remember, the dependent variable is the response variable. Um, it's the measure. Um, it's the measure you're using to see if it was affected. These are used in experimental and um, causal comparative studies. If you have a regression study that, and you're not manipulating the independent variable, then you're going to use the term predictor and criterion variable. You want to see how the predictor variables influence or relate to the criterion variable. If you're doing a simple correlation study, you're lo you have variables of interest, because remember, independent and dependent variables um, are really arbitrary. The terms are arbitrary when you're doing a correlational study. So correlational, you have variables of interest, and those are simply the variables you're looking to see if there's a relationship, there's a relationship between. And then finally, that brings me to control variables. Um, a control variable is a variable that you know influences the dependent variable or the independent variable, and you want to really neutralize the effect of that variable uh, on 
on your study. So you have control variables, and oftentimes control variables are statistically controlled for in research studies. So these are the different types of variables you can have in your studies. Let's look at ex a few examples and um, make sure that we clearly understand these terms and are able to identify independent, dependent, predictor, criterion, variables of interest, and also control variables. Here's our first example. Um, let I want you to identify the variables, the label those variables as an independent, dependent, or control variable, and then um, talk a little bit about how that variable is being operationally defined. So here's our example. Um, and this example is stated in terms of a research hypothesis. There will be a statistically significant increase in tolerance scores as measured by the tolerance and diversity scale among freshman college students who are presented a program of skits and discussion on diversity in their English 101 classes as opposed to freshman college students who um, are not given the program. So the first question I'm going to ask is, do we have, what type of study do we have? Do we have a group comparison study? Do we have a correlational study? Since we're looking at the difference between two groups, um, we have a group comparison study. So that means we're going to have what type of variables? Let you think for a moment. You should be thinking independent and dependent variables. So we're looking for an independent and a dependent variable. All right, let's first start with the independent variable. And then remember, that's usually the variable that's being manipulated, or you want to see if the variable has an effect on another variable. So I'll let you read over the example again, or the research hypothesis. What's the independent variable? Hopefully you're thinking type of English 101 class. Um, there's an English 101 class that has a program of skits and discussion, and there's an English 101 class that doesn't have that aspect. They may just have discussion. So um, our independent variable is type of English 101 class, and that independent variable has the two levels, the English 101 class with the skits and discussion on diversity and the one without. Now, what's the dependent variable? What's the variable that we're looking um, to have an effect on, or the response variable? Hopefully you're, you, say, you said or you're thinking tolerance scores. So tolerance scores, or to lever, level, level of tolerance, is the dependent variable. And in this hypothesis, uh, the dependent variable is operationally defined. Remember, operational definition is how I'm going to measure that dependent variable. So um, how are we going to measure level of tolerance, or tolerance scores? As you can see here, it says, as measured by the tolerance and diversity scale. So tolerance and diversity scale is the operational definition for tolerance scores. Let's go ahead and look at another example. Here we have another research hypothesis, and it says this. Male veterans seen for depressive symptoms at an outpatient clinic um, of the Veterans Administration and prescribed Prozac have a statistically significantly lower score on, or scores on the Beck Depression scale than male veterans seen for depressive symptoms at an outpatient um, VA clinic who do not receive Prozac. So again, are we looking at the relationship between variables? Or are we comparing um, different groups? <clears throat> Hopefully you're thinking we're comparing different groups. We have a group comparison study, so we likely have what type of variables? Independence and dependence. Um, so our independent, what is the variable being manipulated? What's the variable being manipulated here? You may have to read through this um, research hypothesis a few times to catch it. What's, what's the variable being manipulated? Hopefully you've identified Prozac, um, the pre the, whether or not the male veterans seen for depressive symptoms are taking the medication Prozac. That's your independent variable. Again, the independent variable has two levels. Um, the prescription of Prozac. Either it is prescribed or it's not prescribed. So that's the independent variable. Now let's um, talk about dependent variable. There, what's the dependent variable here? 
the dependent variable here is level of depression and um, it's operationally defined as scores on the Beck depression scale. Now, are there any control variables um, in this scenario? Control variables. Remember I said control variables are things that you want to neutralize um, in a research study. I said majority of time, there, or a lot of times, they're statistically controlled for. But they can also be um, variables in which the researcher controls for from a research design perspective. So the researcher can limit the population or limit, um, <clears throat> limit who they're studying to control for that variable. So I want you to look here and um, identify, are there any control variables here? Hopefully you have identified gender. Here we're only looking at males because maybe gender could influence um, the level of depression scores, the dependent variable. And so I'm only going to, in this scenario, um, look at males. And I'm not going to statistically control for it or add it as another um, independent variable. I'm just going to control for it by nature of the research design. So um, males could be considered a control variable. Now let's talk a little bit about you identifying the variables in your study. I often find it helpful to create a chart um, to identify the variables in a research question. And it, my chart usually, um, here's an example of my chart, it usually has three separate columns. Um, one where I identify the variable and label the variable. Um, one where I list the research question and or hypotheses. And then in a moment we're going to talk about operational definitions. So um, an example we actually looked at in a few lessons ago was this research question. The research question is, is there, um, is there a difference in second grade students' attitudes toward math as measured by the attitude toward mathematics inventory who participate in the Math 2.0 program as opposed to second grade students who participate in a traditional math program? I'm going to start here by identifying the dependent variables. Now, if I go down and I scroll down and I look at my hypotheses, I'll note that the attitudes toward mathematic inventory actually has three subscales I'm going to look at. So I have three in or three dependent variables. One of the dependent variables is external motivation. So here in my um, chart, I'm going to label my dependent variable one as external motivation. Now let's talk about operational definitions and take this example and operationally define external motivation. Remember, an operational definition is a clear, concise definition of how the variable is going to be measured or observed, uh, so what it looks like. Also appropriate when you're doing operational definitions, it's also appropriate based on the theoretical framework that you're using to go ahead and define the um, the variable in narrative form based on the literature. So again, I usually use a chart when I'm doing this. Sometimes I put the chart in my research plan. Sometimes I don't. It just helps me write the narrative form. But let's go ahead and look at the chart again and talk about the narrative and operational definition. Here, remember um, that my dependent variable, or dependent first dependent variable, remember there are three, but the first dependent variable I'm going to look at is extrinsic motivation. Um, in my chart, the first thing I'm going to do is operationally define, or not operationally define, sorry, narratively define extrinsic motivation um, based on the theoretical framework that I'm using. And let's say in this example, I'm going to use self-determination theory. So I would take Desi's um, definition and say extrinsic motivation refers to the desire to engage in an activity because it leads to um, some type of unrelated outcome. So extrinsic motivation based on the theoretical framework. Let's say that theoretical framework has a corresponding measure or validated instrument. And that validated instrument is called the attitudes toward mathematics inventory. That mathematics, to, um, so that's how I'm going to operationally define or measure extrinsic motivation. And specifically, because I'm only looking at one subscale, I'm going to list out the questions. Let's say questions 3, 5, 7, and 11 measure extrinsic motivation. That's my operational definition for extrinsic motivation. Let me stop here for a moment, and we're going to talk about this more extensively in instrumentation, but let me stop here and mention this. Um, when doing quantitative research, 
In order to ensure validity of your study, it's really important that you measure variables, especially dependent variables, but you measure variables using validated, valid and reliable instruments that are out there. That means that the there's an instrument that's been created that um, has been validated usually through a confirmatory analysis or some type of factor analysis, a principal component analysis. There's been some type of research study done. Um, it's important that it's been validated. So there's been a research study done, a factor analysis done for validity, and um, Kronbach Alpha or some other type of reliability statistic has been run and it's been shown reliable. And a good rule of thumb is to have a reliability above 0.7 or 0.8. Um, that means that a instrument is valid and reliable. So it's important when you're choosing um, instrument or choosing something choosing your dependent variables that you have a validated and reliable instrument that you're using. It's also important to consider um, that it's been normalized or used with your specific population also. Um, so just something to keep in mind as you're operationally defining your your variables, um, especially your dependent variables, your criterion variable, your variables of interest, make sure you're using valid, reliable instruments that have been normed on your um, population of interest. So we've looked at um, the different types of variables. We've defined those different types of variables. We've looked at some examples of how to identify um, and label variables. And then we've also talked about narratively and operationally defining your variables. So now it's time for you to look at your research questions your, and your hypotheses and label, define, um, identify each one of your variables. Again, I encourage you to use the handout that I've provided, use the information here. Um, you may want to start with a chart and then write it, write out your variables in narrative form. So um, it's time for you to apply this information.